Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today we're going to take a look at the RFI evaluation on the IQ3500 generator manufactured by Generac. Now, I have to tell you, this, this video really surprised me, and I hope it's going to surprise you a little bit too. We included some additional stuff in this video, uh, basically to set benchmarks with the inverters and the kind of RFI that we see out of them. So hopefully uh, you'll get a little education as well. Maybe not. Maybe you already know this stuff and just want the result. We have it for you. Anyway, with that, uh, hey, the XYL is going to kill me if I don't tell you. Click the subscribe button down below. That way, uh, if you hit notify as well, you get notified of my new videos. And, of course, any video that you like, give me a like on the video. And questions, comments, make them in the questions and comments section down below. With that, the IQ 3500 RFI tests. Well, you know... Today started out as a RFI test, and um, my good friend Zach, who's on the other side of the camera right now, and I are playing around, though, a little bit with what other things we can look at and what other things we can determine and how they're related. Um, so this quickly became an adventure on our part. Uh, so we are going to get to looking at the RFI of the IQ3500 today, but I just had to share this with you. First off, we are going to examine these three inverters. Inverter 1, this is an extremely low budget inverter. This is made by a company called Best Tech. I don't know if you can properly see the label, but this is a 300 watt, 12 volt DC to 120 volt AC inverter. Very low end. I don't recommend it and you'll see why. This is a little bit more money. This right here is made by the same company, but they call this a pure sine wave inverter and this is also 300 watts and then finally we're going to take a look at the 600 watt inverter that I use with my go kit and this is a little heavy so if I start shaking or whatever you'll understand this is made by Samlex Power and uh, it's used a lot in RVs and in solar installations. This is a 600 watt inverter, pure sine wave. And this is RF Quiet. We are going to test all three of these right now. Well, okay, so here's our setup for the inexpensive low end inverter. This is plugged into a battery power source and coming out of the inverter, we're taking this out and tying in to our scope to take a look at the pattern. Now, we're also going to take a look at this little portable scope output, just so you can see kind of a comparison between a full-size scope and a little portable scope. All right. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the inverter. Gee! Does that look like a sine wave? I better check that with the other uh, portable scope here. Of course, I'm being funny, but let's take a oh, look at that. Exactly the same thing, square wave. Okay, so this is not a true sine wave inverter, is it? Now, while this is on, we'll back off a little bit and we'll see what the RF is. All right, so let's do some rudimentary RF checks. My little PL600 here, this handles HF, MF, and LF, as well as FM broadcast frequencies. I've got it on right now, and I've got it down at roughly, uh, oh, somewhere around 180 meters. Now, am I... 
I've got to tell you, that is a reasonably quiet device. But that square wave just isn't going to work for me. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and continue and move to the mid-range inverter. All right, so now we've got this little gem hooked up, and we've hooked it up exactly the same way as the other one. Let's go ahead and see what the sine wave looks on this, and do that RFI test. All right, let's go ahead and turn the power on, and bada bing bada boom. Wow, that looks a little bit more like we think it should. Let me go ahead, I'm just going to show this little uh, mini scope just so you can see that it also does a, whoop, got to get on it, sorry, I just am not, there we go, shows a very usable pattern. Now, it in no way is as good as this, but, hey, um, that's all right. In a pinch, if this is all you got and you got it in the trunk of your car, it'll work really well. All right, so let's go ahead and check some RF. All right, so let's use our handy dandy portable radio here and whoa! Seventy-five meters. It's just noisy throughout the entire HF spectrum here. I'm just coming up through different frequencies. I'm at fifteen meters now. Thirteen. And that's FM. go a little off frequency. Nothing on FM! So, you know what? This thing has a beautiful sine wave, but it is noisy! Well, alright. So, let's go ahead and turn on the 600 watt inverter and see what we have. All right, well, you'll look at that beautiful sine wave. And uh, again, this is right at 60 hertz. It is absolutely at 120 volts. This is, this is an extremely clean signal. But, hey, what about the RF? Well, all right, let's go ahead and take our trusty little radio here again and kind of get a general idea. I'm at about uh, 1.7 megahertz here. We'll uh, pop up. This is about 3.1, not in the ham band. I am picking up a little bit, but not a lot. Let's keep going. This is 385, 3.85 megahertz. A little bit more directly from the unit. But at a distance, nothing. Let's come up again. This is in the 60 meter block right now. So, actually, pretty quiet. All right. We don't use 50, but here's 40. And I'll take this up to, um, oh, let's, uh, I'm on 7. Uh, 2 1 all the time. So 40 meters. That's pretty quiet. All right, 30 meters. Quiet. Twenty meters. A little noise, but I'm gonna let me adjust down to where I'm actually in the 20 meter band for us. Because that's really what I care about. 
is where I'm at in the band for us. So I'll go down to 14250. That's pretty quiet. I'm happy with that. All right. Trying to get into 15 meters where 15 meters really is. Come on. I'm actually in it, but I'm in the CW portion. And, uh, there we go, close enough. A little bit, but not bad. All right. And let's do 10 meters. 10 meters is always a nightmare for everything picking up interference. Very quiet. So, what are we going to do next? We are going to hook up an antenna to this! What do I mean by an antenna? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually going to plug an extension cord into this and see if the extension cord coming out of it actually radiates. Because that is the second kind of interference that we can put out from any electrical connection. Well, all right. So we plug this extension cord in right into this to make an antenna. I am back on... I, you know what? I'm not getting anything. So let's see. I'm going to skip a couple. I want to go right to 80. You know, picked up a little uh, bit at, uh, I believe, 15. This is nothing significant. Just like the test that I ran with my whole rig and everything being powered by this, I know that that is RF quiet enough for me to operate my amateur radio. Uh, so, what have we learned? All right, so here's the sine wave for the Honda. We are right at 60 hertz. Our voltage, 124 RMS AC volts. So we're right where we need to be. Now, let's go ahead and do the same test that we've been doing all along. And we will start at, uh, oh, let's see, just for fun and giggles. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and start here. We're at about 500 hertz, and I'm just checking for noise. So I'm going to hold it up here. I'm getting more noise out of my lights than I am out of this cable. Look at this. See that? So let's go up a bit. This is 120 meters. A little bit of engine noise, but remember, we don't have a load here, and I'm even picking it up through here, so it's definitely coming in through there because this is just radiating that noise. All right, but for the most part, I'm seeing nothing. I'm really happy with that. All right, go up again 80 meters. A little noise. You know what, though? We were picking that noise up all over the place with that other inverter, though, and it, it works fine in the field, so this noise doesn't seem to be enough really to bother us. And remember, I've ran this Honda on 80 meters, on 160 meters. I've ran this Honda on 60 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters. I've ran the Honda on all of them. So, if anything... This is just kind of telling us that, uh, well, you know, a little noise coming off this is okay as long as we're not picking it up on our radios, which with the Honda we're not. So I will tell you at this point, I'm just going to say, 
we have a benchmark with the Honda. Let's get the IQ 3500 fired up, warmed up, and let's run the test on that. All right, well, the moment you've all been waiting for, me too, the IQ 3500. Let me turn this little gem on here. By the way, come on in here, Zach, and get a shot of the sine wave. Right? This is absolutely, again, perfect. 60 hertz. And look at that. Our RMS at 1.21 uh, to 1.22. I am very happy with that. All right. So, let's see how this thing does. This thing on? Uh, oh, well, it's putting out power. Let me go to 80 meters. That's usually a trouble spot. Oh, you got to be kicked. This, nah, this can't be. Sixty meters? How about forty meters? I I'm not The test rig's exactly the same as a Honda. Just down into the 20 meter band. I'm going to go to 4250 or thereabouts. Run out and buy another one of these. So you're hearing stuff, right? Let me show you what that is. It's the lights. be honest with you, I did not expect not to have any RF at all coming off this thing. I'm, I'm just blown away. Um, all right, well, you know what? Let's take it back into the cutting room and I'll give a synopsis. Wow. Would you believe it? I, I'm kind of beside myself on the results of that RFI test on the IQ 3500. I mean, I, it's quieter than the Honda. We, as in the amateur radio community out here in uh, Ventura County, California, has have been praising the Honda for a very long time, and to see a competing piece of equipment come out uh, at a lower price that is RFI quieter and noise level quieter than our Honda 2200Is, I, I have to tell you, I'm a little in shock. But, hey, the proof's there. Now, I will give one uh, caveat here. This is not a test hooked to a radio. Okay, we're evaluating RFI in the sense of what we believe that it's putting out or radiating. Um, we don't believe that any of the RFI is coming down the wire uh, at this time. Now, the only way we're ever really going to be able to check this 100% is to get it out in the field, hook it up to radios with a bunch of antennas and 
all that kind of stuff. And that is in the plan, and we will have a video on that. And in that video, we may even include some additional generators. That if we can get people to bring them out and uh, test them, we may have a lot more RFI information on a lot of generators. I'm hoping some of my uh, uh, subscribers hear that uh, statement and are interested in doing that. Uh, anyway, with that, hey, that's all I got. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Give me a like if you like the video and comments and questions down below. For now, this is Stu AG6AG saying 73, and I hope to hear you out there on the air.